What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a brand new add-on for adding surface imperfections to your materials in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you might've noticed that this add-on is trending on the Blender market right now. So Realistic Touch Surface Imperfections is an add-on from the guys over at B Production. So we've talked about add-ons from B Production before. You know, we've talked about the tree and vegetation, the traffic. Um, they have a population add-on and the real world texture or the real wood textures, which is basically what I use for most of my woods in Blender. Um, but if you do want to check this out, you can check it out at the cgessentials.com slash realistic touch. And you can currently get that for 25% off with this coupon code right here. Note that that is an affiliate link, meaning that I do receive a commission if you purchase through my link. And I did receive a copy of this add-on from the developer to try out. But let's go ahead and jump over into Blender and check out the way that this add-on works. Okay, and so first off, it's not really an add-on as much as a collection of assets. So if you go to Edit Preferences, what you want to do is you want to extract the folder that comes along with this, and then you want to add this in your file pad. So you just click on the plus right here to add it to your asset library and make sure you reference that folder in the path in order to be able to access this in your asset library. Note that I like to set these to append so that these come in as individual or unique versions of these node groups whenever I bring them in and they're not linked together. And now let's jump over into our shader editor. And so notice how inside of this assets folder, there's a bunch of different kinds of surface imperfection maps in here. And note that you've got everything from scratches to smears and smudges, uh, liquid stains, lots of different things in here. But basically the way these work is you just drag them into your um, material nodes right here or your shader editor um, and then you set them up. And so you need a little bit of knowledge about how this works or you need a little bit of knowledge about how shaders work but it's really not especially difficult. So let's say for example that we wanted to add a dirt material to this object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag one of these materials in. Maybe this dirt six right here. And so what I want to do is I want to drag that node group in and then I want to drag the result into my roughness. And so what that's going to do is that's going to affect the roughness over here on the left. But we have a problem in that it doesn't look very good right now. Well, the reason why it doesn't look very good is it also needs to be linked to the UV map of the object. So you can just drag that into the vector right here. Well, now you can see that this is adding that dirt effect to your principled BSDF, um, which is then being output over here. And so this is adjustable, meaning you can make changes to the way that it looks, um, the size of it, the location, other things like that. So first off, you've got two options in here for your A and B. And so what those are going to do is those are going to affect the color of the map that's in here. And if you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can actually do a control shift click right here just to preview the way this is going to look. But notice how if I come in here and I make adjustments to say the B value right here. So I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit. Notice how your darks are getting darker right here. And generally you're gonna wanna stay black white in here. I mean, you could kind of adjust this to a color, but it doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. Um, so usually you're just gonna do black and white and you're just going to affect how dark or light this is. Now, you do have other options in here. Like for example, notice how I can adjust the minimum and maximums right here using this slider in order to set the contrast between those two colors. And remember that in this case, the dark areas are gonna be really reflective and the light areas are not. So if I was to jump back into my result by doing a control shift click, and again, note that you have to have Node Wrangler enabled for that to work, you can see that the reflective areas are the areas that were darkest in that map, right? Here, 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 things like that. And so you can do the same kind of thing by adjusting the brightness and contrast in here. Notice how as I bring that brightness up, I'm getting more of a matte result in here, where if I bring it back down, I'm getting a little more shiny and it's showing through. But you've also got the option to do things like invert 
that texture. And so notice how white, when I invert that, what it's doing is it's flipping the black and white, which is changing where the reflections are showing up based on this map right here. So you're basically just inverting the black and white values. Now, the other thing that you can do in here is you can also adjust how big this is. And let's go ahead and let's drop in something different. Let's bring in maybe like the fingerprints because you can see those a little bit better. So I'm gonna bring the fingerprints in like this. I'm gonna drag this result into my roughness. I'm going to make sure that I've dragged my UV into my vector right here. But notice how that scale is going to allow me to set how big or small those fingerprints are on this surface, right? So the higher the scale, the smaller this is going to be. Obviously, you don't want this to be massive because you're just going to get it tiled on this surface, which is not what you want. But if you want some larger fingerprints, whoops, you can drag this value down as well. And then the other thing that you can do is you can adjust the location, meaning you can adjust how these sit on your surface. So you can move things up or down or side to side using these location sliders in here, as well as setting the rotation of this, which is probably going to make more sense if you're using something linear like the scratches, um, because then you can kind of adjust the rotation of that material. But let's take a look at some of the other things you can do with this add-on. Okay, and so once you understand what's contained in here, you can do a lot of interesting things. Like for example, let's say that I wanted to add, um, let's say that I wanted to add some liquid stains on here. So I'm just going to drag liquid stains in here and I'm going to drag these into my roughness. I'm going to drag my UV map, which is in the texture coordinate node into the vector. So that's going to add some liquid stains in here. But say that you also wanted to add some damage to this. So I don't think we have any dents, um, but let's go with, let's just say we wanted to add some dirt in here as well to make this look dirty. Well, you can drag this in here like this. And again, you wanna make sure that you drag your UV in here, but instead of dragging this result into your roughness, right? Cause that's just going to replace this other result. Right, we don't wanna do that. Remember that these are basically two color maps, right? So if I do a control shift click, it's just applying a color map to these surfaces. Well, what we wanna do is we want to combine these. So to combine these, we wanna do a shift A and we want to add a mix node. And in this case, we wanna mix the color because we're mixing the color of the maps. And so what I wanna do is I wanna drag both of these into the color slots like this, then I want this result to go into the roughness and I'll do a control shift click um, in order to place this in here. But now you can see that this is adding both the dirt as well as the water damage that was in here or the stains. And again, those are both fully adjustable. So I can make one of them bigger or smaller. I can also make the other one bigger or smaller depending on what we're trying to do right here. So you can combine these using a mix node. And then the other interesting thing you can do with this is say you wanted to add some damage in here where a color showed through, right? So say this had some scratches and this had like a metallic paint on the outside and you wanted to make it look like the scratches had kind of peeled off. Well, what you can do is not only can you use a mix color node to mix the two maps, you can also use a mix shader node. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a second principled BSDF. So I'm just gonna type in principled BSDF, add that right here, and I'm just gonna have it be a white color. So we want this to act like there's a white object on the inside. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna combine those two shaders. So to do that, we're just gonna do a shift A, and we're gonna do a shader, we want a mix shader node right here. So I'm just going to drag this into the bottom. We'll drag this into our material output and we'll drag this into the top. So first off, not very exciting at the moment, right? And the reason why it's not very exciting at the moment is because this is basically just mixing two colors. So you're getting kind of a either or, you just get like this full on white material or you get what we had before. That's not necessarily what we want. What we want is we want to tell this to only include this white material at some scratch locations. So to do that, we're just going to scroll down and we're going to pick one of these scratches, maybe this one right here. And I'm going to drag that result into my base color. Now, remember, you need to drag your UV into your vector. But once you do that, what that's going to do is that is only going to apply 
this white material in locations where these scratches are. And then you could come in here and you can make them bigger or smaller like this. Um, but the other thing you could do is you could also drag this into the roughness of this object right here, right? So that way the roughness is also only being affected by the location of the scratches. But now you've got these scratches on here that make it look like this object was scratched and that paint is showing through. And so once you understand how this works and you get a little bit of shader action going on in here, um, you can really create a lot of interesting results using this add-on. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this uh, collection of surface imperfection assets. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to that on this page as well. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.